Welcome to this video. I'm sure you guys are all here because you are thinking about building a closet and you're thinking about the IKEA PAX system for your closet. So in this video, I'm gonna give you some information about how to get started in planning and building your IKEA PAX closet. I hope that my experiences here will help you be able to make some good informed decisions. So this video is gonna have two parts. The first part, I'm gonna be going over the basics of the system. So the colors, the types, the sizes, etc., those kinds of general information you can find on Ikea as well, but I'm going to kind of do a very quick general summary of it. The second part, I'm going to actually go over the built closet system that I have um, behind me right here, and I'm gonna go over why I chose to do certain things as well as some tips along the way, as well as lessons learned from actually putting all of this together. Getting started on one of these guys, of course you need to know how much room you have. You have to understand where you wanna put this system and what kind of things that you wanna put into this system. The breakdown is that you have these very large frames, which you see behind me right here, these frames right here. And these are the bases basically for putting together everything because you'll put these frames up and then you'll fill it with um, these different shelves and pullouts and rods, which are the accessories that go inside the frame. The frame itself comes in three different colors. So you have the white one, you have the black one, or they call it black brown, and then you have the brown one. The brown one is actually, um, you can see the wood grain on it. It has like a wood tone to it. So the looks of these closets can be done in three different ways. The first is you can leave it open just like I have back here. The second is you can put on sliding doors, and the third is you can put on hinge doors. So on the Ikea website, they actually split the frames into two different um, sections. They do hinge door system frames and they do sliding door system frames. The frames aren't actually any different. It's the same frames. It's just that when you do the sliding door system, you need double the frame because the door has to slide from one side to another. The hinge door system doesn't require that, so you can go as small as you need. They have a ton of different types of doors, different kinds of designs, different types of colors. There are also different patterns that you can get as well. I think there are mirrored ones, there are different handles, so you can definitely get a lot of different looks with this system. So for heights, they have two different heights and I'm reading them off here, but they have one that is 92 and 7 8, which I'm going to refer to as 93 just to make things easier. And they have a 79 and 1 8, which I'm gonna to refer to as 79 inches. So 93 inches is close to eight feet. It's three inches shy of eight feet. So it's actually quite high. Most ceilings in residential areas are going to be about eight feet high. That's pretty standard. So the 79 inch one is about seven feet high. So that one is actually not that high. I would say it's about like a whole head, a little bit over a head taller than most people. There are three different widths that you can get these frames in. There is a 39 and 3 eighths inch, or I'm gonna call it 40 inches. There is a 29 and a half inch, which I'm gonna call 30 inches, and there is a 19 and 5 8 inch, which I'm gonna call 20 inches. So there is a 40 inch, 30 inch, and 20 inch one. So they are in increments of 10 inches. And in terms of depth, there's actually two different depths for these closets. There is the 22 and 7 8 or 23 inch depth one, and there is a 13 and 3 quarters, which is a 14 inch depth one. And why that's important is most closets, you need Need about 23 inches. Most closets that we actually build in houses are required to have about 24 inches of depth in order to fit like actual clothing inside of it and hang it uh, the way you see it's hung behind over here. So all of these numbers that I mentioned are generally for these regular pieces these numbers don't, don't apply for corner pieces. Corner pieces are a little bit different, so I'm not gonna be talking too much about corner pieces, um, but for all general pieces, all the general like 40, 30, 
20 inch wide pieces. They come in three different colors, two different depths, and two different heights. Now, in terms of accessories, man, there are just so many different accessories. Of course, all the accessories also come in the same three colors that the frames come in. So the white, the black, and the brown. I would say that some of the most important ones that pretty much everybody get in order to build a system is you need rods for hanging clothes. You have just regular shelves over here or glass shelves. You have these pull-out trays over here. You have drawers. Some drawers have glass fronts, depending if you want to see the items behind it or not. There are just a ton of different accessories, so I definitely go in there and explore your options, but the ones that I just listed are the most popular ones and the most basic ones to build your closet. You can go to the IKEA store planner or the closet planner section and they have these computers over there where you can sit over there and basically drag um, the frames, the accessories and everything um, all together and have that information stored together. So when you finally have something that you like and want to build, every, you can print out a list of everything that you put together and just go get all those things. What that is, is basically this planner right here. As you can see, I built this in model form. And the great thing about building this in model form is actually they have um, some clothing and some hangers just for reference. It doesn't obviously show exactly the types of clothes that you want to hang or shoe sizes or anything like that, but it's good to have there for reference. So you can see that I built this in model, but then I also had a pen and I went on top of it and make sure that I wrote exactly what I wanted to store in each of these shelves or drawers. When you're building this, it's going to be a little bit hard to plan exactly um, to the dot which hole you're going to put each shelf or each drawer or each rod in. I I think you just want to have a general idea so you know the amounts that you need to buy and you kind of just have to do it on the spot as you're building it but it's definitely good to have like a general idea of where everything is going to be going after you've built it you can actually print the system and it'll tell you every single piece that's needed to complete this closet so it'll tell you every single piece and where to get it and quantity of it the last thing it does which is actually really helpful if you do know that you want to plan um, your closet like down to the T so you know exactly where each shelf is going, where each rod is going, where each drawer is going, and you built that perfectly out in your model. What's great about it is it actually tells you exactly which number of hole you need to put um, that shelf in. So for example, I built this model and I put the shelf right here. So it's telling me that I need to put this hole in the 29th hole. A few other general tips and things that I personally didn't know as I was building this is tools that I might need um, that aren't listed in the general instructions. The first thing is when you have multiple frames and they're next to each other, you'll notice that there is a little accessory that helps you kind of clamp these two together and it goes through one of these holes. Basically it screws in together and pulls the two frames tight together. And you want to use that because one, it gives a structural integrity and two, it prevents gaps from happening. In order to clamp it together, you have to understand that these holes don't go all the way through this entire um, system or this board right here. So you're going to need a drill to drill through the entire system to be able to put those pins together and screw it together. The next thing is attaching them to the walls. It's incredibly important to attach these guys into the walls because they are very large systems and especially if you live in a place where there might be earthquakes, you definitely, definitely, definitely want to be able to secure them into the walls. For a lot of you guys who don't understand um, wall construction in general. Most residential constructions consist of studs, so wood studs, and these are pieces that are going every 16, 18, 20 inches in your wall. And then you have your gypsum board, particle board on top of that, which is your drywall, um, what you see is your general wall. So your drywall is only about 5 8 inches thick 
and it doesn't have a lot of structural integrity, meaning it's not really holding anything up. It's actually quite soft and it falls apart pretty easily. When you're trying to drill things into the wall, you'll notice that uh, like a really long nail will go straight through it. But because the drywall doesn't have any like structural integrity, it'll just like pull right out because it's just very soft. There's two ways about that. Either you have to plan things so that it screws directly into a wood stud because when you screw into a wood stud, it'll screw into this long wood piece and you won't have to worry about it pulling out. It's pretty stable that way if you get a really long um, nail or screw into that. However, if you can't figure out where your stud is and you're kind of going into drywall, also it's hard to plan exactly where your holes are going to be if you have these kinds of systems. So if you're screwing into drywall, make sure you get drywall anchors. And Ikea does sell them. They, they sell these um, huge boxes of drywall anchors that come in like many different sizes. Um, that have screws with them as well. So definitely pick up one of those boxes. You wanna drill a small hole through the wall first, hammer in this plastic piece, which is the drywall anchor, and then screw your nail into that. And what that does is while you're screwing the nail into it, it expands that plastic piece and it hooks onto the back of the drywall. It prevents the screw from directly pulling out. So those two things are incredibly important. So make sure that you have a drill and make sure that you have drywall anchors. This is what the final or almost final product of the IKEA pack system I ended up with. I guess the first thing that I want to talk about was what you want the closet to be used for. For me specifically, I want it to be very purposeful, meaning it wasn't put together here for the purpose of it looking nice, for it to decorate a room, for it to look like some sort of boutique. The sole purpose was to use as a closet so I can put all my clothes, all my accessories, all my shoes and bags and everything together in one place. There's room to grow because I'm not going to just put things here for the sake of decoration for it to look completed. I'm going to fill it up when I need to fill it up and I'm going to leave it empty if it doesn't have anything to fill it up. So within the room that I had, which is this back wall over here, I was able to fit three 40 inch uh, packs frames behind here with like a little bit of room on both ends, like about three inches on either side. I just centered this on the wall and I chose to get the 93 inch high frames rather than the 79 inch high frames. So the reason why I chose that was I wanted to feel like it was kind of built into the wall. So I wanted to be as close to the ceiling as possible. An important thing is to understand the height of your ceilings and that will help you kind of decide exactly which height for the frames that you wanna buy. Just as like a general background most, most residential homes are going to have an eight foot ceiling and that is 96 inches high. And there are definitely like nuances to that because you can live in a loft and have super high ceilings. You can live in like a home that has a gabled roof so you have an angle to your ceiling. So there are definitely exceptions to that, but just like as a general rule, most places are going to be about eight feet high. What that means is you have about a three inch difference between the top of this 93 inch frame and the ceiling, which is actually just enough for you to build your Ikea case on the floor and be able to rotate it up onto the wall, which is for me the most ideal way to build and mount this system. Of course, no matter what, you should still check the height of your ceiling because there's always discrepancies everywhere. Even though it's supposed to be eight feet, you'll find that in some places it's a little bit short of eight feet and in some places it's actually tipping upwards and it's a little bit over eight feet. If it's over for eight feet, it's never gonna be a problem because you have more space than you need, but it's definitely going to be an issue if you're a little bit under eight feet. So definitely do a check and double check of the ceiling heights exactly where you want to place this. 
even in one room as small as this room which is like about a 10 by 10 there's going to be different ceiling heights inside here so definitely make sure to measure the ceiling height of exactly where you're placing these systems i chose to get this without any doors so no sliding doors no hinge doors or anything just because not for the sake of having it really displayed per se more for the sake of the room feeling a little bit more open and a little bit bigger these closets are pretty deep they're 23 24 inches which is almost two feet in depth and being in a small room taking away that two feet really makes a difference by leaving it open like this you have the space to put your stuff yet it doesn't feel as closed off as it would if you actually put doors on these in the future if you ever want to install doors you still can I'll talk about that a little bit later starting on this side with this frame over here i chose to have all of my handbags on this side because my window is actually on that side and i do have the sun coming in a lot and it gets pretty bright so i was worried that some of my handbags might get too much sunlight so i kind of chose to have them the furthest away from the window as possible as you can see the top over there is empty because i just don't have anything to fill that in with yet and I'm perfectly fine with that. Eventually when I get more stuff or more boxes, it's gonna need storage. And so I built this with the intention of having some room to grow. The next shelf over here, I just have a few just random bags. I also have a pair of shoes and I have like this like jewelry set that I got for my wedding. It's like a very like, it's like a Chinese, traditional Chinese like jewelry chest, which I thought was nice. Doesn't match anything I have over here, but I think that's fine. And that's what I'm talking about in terms of I didn't build this to create like a beautiful background for myself. I built it for the purpose of storage and using it actually. So there is my jewelry chest. The next one down is like the most display-ish it will get ever. And I'm actually thinking about completely changing it out, removing the displays and just adding another shelf here, just because I'm just not a big fan of like completely displaying things just because I don't have the room for it. I need the space to store the stuff that I have. And this is just taking up space. It's not really doing anything. And I just feel like it's becoming a little bit of a waste of space for me. Moving down here, the next three over here, the next three shelves are all for shoes. And these are definitely not all the shoes that I own, but for a 23 inch deep frame there are several ways that you can actually store shoes the ikea pack system actually has shoes shoe shelves like shelves made specifically for shoes they're either angled or they have like ridges on them and you can like pull them out they're like double layered but i didn't particularly like the way any of them looked and I just felt like they weren't flexible enough. If I bought the shoe shelves, I wouldn't be able to use them really for anything else besides shoes, especially if I changed my mind in the future. And I feel like most of them were made of a different material. I think they were made of like metal material rather than like this MDF or plywood coated white. So I just opted to go for the standard regular shelves, which are super duper affordable. The only thing that you have to understand and know beforehand um, before jumping into that is that it doesn't pull out for one and it's really deep like i said it's 23 inches which means you can actually fit two layers of shoes like one in front of another but that just means that your shoes in the back are just harder to reach and more difficult to get to if you're going to double layer shoes like that however the other thing that you can actually do which i thought about a while back is actually use pull out trays for your shoes so ikea sells these pull out trays they're basically shelves that actually pull out fully so if you don't like any of the shoe shelves that actually come with the pack system you can get these pull out shelves space them out a little bit further and you can actually pull your shoes out to reach the ones in the back a little bit better and i think that's a perfect solution and like an in between just a regular shelf 
like this and an actual shoe shelf. So if that's something that you want to consider, I think it's a great way to store your shoes. So when you're actually installing these guys over here, definitely, definitely have all your products out. That's going to be the one thing that I'm going to say for everything out here is to have them on hangers, all different clothes of different lengths, sizes, sleeve lengths, color, um, shoes of different heights, different widths, etc. You want to have them out here so you can use it as an example as you're setting this up. At the end of the day though, all of these shells, all of these inserts are relatively easy to kind of just take out and move around. So it's not too big of a problem if you put it in the wrong place. You can just take it out and move it to the right place. So the last two items down there, I opted for the really large pull-out drawers. And for me, that's because I like to store pants like jeans i have a lot of jeans in drawers and i like to store sweaters folded up in drawers as well and these drawers i gotta tell you are amazing they are giant and they are durable and super high quality and that pretty much completes this first section. One quick thing I'm gonna note before I move on is the placement of these drawers. If you are considering getting doors attached to the system, you have to understand that doors, like for example, hinge doors require obviously like a door, three hinges, right? So you're gonna have one at the top, one in the middle, and one at the very bottom. The top and the middle are usually not an issue because most people have open shelves like this or they have rods like this over here. So adding a hinge to the middle section is usually not an issue. So the hinges actually go into the holes over here as well. But when you get to the bottom, I know that a lot of people tend to like me put drawers at the bottom like that. So I have drawers on both sides over here. If you put drawers on the bottom, you can't access the holes down there anymore, which means there's no room for you to install that third hinge at the bottom for a door. So if you are considering adding a door, you have to understand that you may have to move these drawers to a different place or you may have to get rid of the very bottom drawer. Moving on to this middle section. The top over there, just like all the way across, I have just a shelf over there because I can't reach there in general, so I use it as storage and I have boxes up there. Moving down here, it's the typical closet rod. So that is a hanging rod. I have actually two of them in both of these. I store all of my tops up here. The positioning of that rod is also a little bit important. For me, I realized that I actually didn't have enough space. So as I got down here, things were trailing on the floor or onto the next shelf. There wasn't enough like breathing room. Um, I wanted to put shoes at the very bottom there, but it didn't fit anymore because everything was, you know, kind of pushed downwards. And I realized that I didn't need like that big gap between the rod and the top or the bottom of the shelf above. So I consider kind of lifting everything up because I had the room. You only really need about like two inches of space between the rod and whatever is above to clear for your hangers. So I decided that it wasn't worth trying to lift this up and making it more difficult for myself to reach these items and just let things kind of drag and play out as it is for now. All right, so moving on to the next section over here, I have one glass shelf followed by two pull-out trays. I knew that I wanted to store all of my accessories in these two trays, and I knew that pretty much everything would fit if I got two trays. So I have a few tips for these pull-out trays that I Kind of had to learn from my mistakes. I actually had to reinstall these trays about three times to get them to the right spot. So I thought I would share a bit of my struggles. I personally really like the look of the trays kind of stacking on top of each other. So them being very close to each other. So if I move this up and I move this up, everything was very close together because I thought that if the jewelry kind of just lies down on there, it would look really nice, really flat. It wouldn't take up a lot of space. What I didn't realize though was that literally nothing else would fit in there if you stack the trays like that. First thing is you actually want to get a liner in here. So Ikea does sell these uh, 
shelf liners I guess and they're actually really great because some of them are actually cut to size they're made to fit exactly in these uh, tray systems um, some of them you do have to trim up a little bit but they're super easy to trim and what's great about them is they're felt on top and they have these little tiny rubber plastic grips on the bottom so it keeps them in place i wanted to get a uh, jewelry holders kind of and the system actually sells jewelry holders especially just for the tray systems they fit exactly like they fit perfectly in here so i bought two of them what i didn't realize was that they are so much bigger than the actual shelf I'm not sure why and what the purpose of it you can see how much it, you can see how much more it's sticking out like there's no reason for that I don't know why it's built super deep like this I didn't realize that I had installed a shelf already and then I went to go buy these and then they didn't fit so I had to move the tray second thing is they also sell these plastic dividers over here that you see everybody has. So I use these to store belts, sunglasses, some hair accessories and stuff. What I didn't also know is that these also require an extra space in between the pullout trays in order for them to fit. If they were, if the trays were stacked right on top of each other, this guy over here would not fit either. You need to give it like, I think one extra hole in between. The other thing is belts. So you would think that if these like tray dividers fit in here that all belts would fit in here as well like basically nicely twirled up and put in its place like coiled up in here but that is not the case like you can see over here that pretty much almost none of my like slightly larger belts fit in here so not even the one that i'm wearing this gucci belt this is the like the one inch gucci belt so it's not even like the big one it's like one of the smaller ones and I think the total distance over here is just a little bit over an inch, but that does not fit in here either because when I move it back and forth, it gets caught. So definitely no, like even when it comes right down to the sizes of belts and sunglasses and accessories and stuff like that, make sure to just measure the sizes of your belt and accessories to make sure that they actually fit. Otherwise you'll end up like me and end up having to move these things three or four times. And these are harder to install because they have uh, drawer systems installed with them. So the last section in this middle part is another rod and I want to hang bottoms over here. Bottom like shorts, shorts, skirts, and I have a few crop tops over there. All right, so moving on to the very last section over here. This very last section, I want to store longer pieces. So some of my longer dresses and then some of extra tops, cardigans, blazers, those kinds of things over here. I wanted to be able to store a few uh, taller boots on the bottom over there as well. I thought that I would have enough height for that. And then I also needed an extra drawer set for things like regular t-shirts, tanks, shorts, workout clothes, leggings, like those kinds of things. They kind of needed their own drawer. So like I mentioned, I put a rod up here hoping to get the dresses in here, but I ended up having a lot more dresses than I expected. Although I do have to say that some of my shorter dresses actually fit right here and they do kind of drag over here on top of these drawers. But one of the great things about choosing the 40 inch wide uh, frame systems is that you can actually divide it in half. So basically you put this L-shaped piece right here or you can actually get a whole divider I think that goes across the um, middle but you can get these dividers over here and your choices are not just drawers. You can actually get drawers, you can get pullouts because this in here is actually the exact size of the 20 inch, 19 inch, 20 inch wide systems. So you can fit anything that you want that you can fit into those systems as well. So if you have a lot of choices of what you can do. So having the 40 inch over here, you can divide it in half and split it into different things um, in those halves as well. So it makes things a lot more flexible. I don't know if you can see, but even on this side of the this L divider thing right here, there are holes. So you can actually like put shelves and things like across over here as well. Another little tip that I wanted to give was if you guys don't like seeing the holes on the side over here, in the kitchen section of Ikea, they actually have hole fillers that they use for the kitchen system, but it's exactly the same because the holes are the same size. You can buy like a pack or two packs and fill in all these holes. They're like little white plastic hole fillers. 
So if you don't like the way this looks, you can definitely opt to fill in all these holes. That about wraps up this video. I hope that it was helpful. I hope that it gave you a little bit of a background and a little bit more information about building this IKEA pack system. Definitely, if you have any questions at all, leave them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer all of them. I wish you the best of luck in designing and building your dream closet. Definitely go and check out some of my other videos if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching this video and definitely stick around for the next one.